Hi everybody. We are back to our little doodle creature lessons. So we've done faces, we've done mouths and different eye patterns. And now I want to show you some things you can do with ears and some other stuff to turn these little doodles specifically into some animals. So I started myself out with some of those little blob shapes we used. And then I left a space for some that aren't pre-blobbed because sometimes it's nice to start drawing it, leave a gap for the ear, draw a little more gap for the ear and back down. So we'll do some like that too. First, let's do a penguin. So if you take your little blob and make kind of a curved in V sort of situation, like that, and then make kind of a frown connected to a smile with a little line through the center and two little dot eyes. You've got yourself a penguin. If you shade it, it'll look more penguiny, but for now, that's a nice, simple way to do a little penguin. Maybe you decide that you want to give them a little, like, couple feathers on the top of their head. Maybe you want to do the same basic penguin thing, but you want to give it a different expression. I would suggest that in general, you probably want to keep the basic beak shape. Otherwise it might end up not looking like a penguin, but you could do different things with the eyes. Like let's make this penguin winking at us. There, little winky penguin. In the same spirit, you could do something like a chicken by just changing this pattern a tiny bit. So we're gonna leave the face without the little curve in it but we're gonna put some fancy pants feathers up on top. And then I noticed that the beak looks more chickenish to me if I do a larger blob on the top and then kind of a little smile underneath to connect it. If we give that some eyes, to me that looks kind of like a little baby chick. Okay. We can also turn it into a pig if we do a round-ish blob in the middle with two good nostril dots. And then we can do whatever type of eyes we want and give it some little round ears. When you're trying to figure out how to make these little doodle guys into animals, think about the simplest part of the animal that you would recognize. When I think of a pig, I think about the snout and I think about a curly tail. So I could even put a little curly cue coming out the side to show his little tail. It's amazing how few lines it takes to make a penguin or a chicken or a pig all from the very same basic blob. Try and think simple. Think what is the thing that I think of first when I picture this animal? Let's do, what else can we do here? Let's do a bunny. So. With bunnies, you can do a lot of expression with their ears. So let's do a bunny series where we talk about how we can do different things just by giving them different ears. I like this face pattern for a rabbit, but again, you can change the mouth, you can change the eyes. As long as you give it some big ears, it's gonna look like a rabbit. So you can go simple and do, you know, one ear, two ear. You can go like this and just by shifting everything slightly to the side, you can make it look like the rabbit is looking off to the side. And then you make the ear on the side that it's looking bigger and the ear on the side it's looking away from a little bit smaller and hidden behind. And that gives the impression that he's looking that way. You can also do ears that stick way out or little ears that kind of sit together in the middle of the head. And that's going to give you, again, really, really different looks without changing much of anything. You could make a whole family of rabbits and everyone could look different. In fact, I did make a whole family of rabbits. Remember that you can do little things to change these too. So we could give this one eyebrows and it becomes angry bunny. If we give this one glasses, you've got a whole nother look right there. So remember that page we did of all the different little doodads you can add. We could put a bow in this bunny by doing a simple little bow shape, which is basically two triangles that connect to a circle and then drawing the ear 
going behind it. <laughs> I think that bow is a little bit small. Next time I might choose to make it a bit bigger, but it looks cute. Let's give this rabbit... I make that rabbit winking. I like when they wink. I think that's cute. Maybe you want to go like this and change the mouth a little bit. You've got lots and lots of options with this. Do I have one more rabbit I want to do? I don't think I do. So this is going to not be a rabbit, even though it's in the rabbit section. How about a monkey? Monkeys have pretty big ears, and they're not really centered up top. They're kind of centered off to the side. So big old ear with the inside. Big ear. This one's going to have to go behind the rabbit. And then I think if we make a face that kind of looks like the penguins, but instead of making these loop lines go all the way to the edge, let's make them go not quite all the way in. Kind of like that. It's almost like you started to draw a heart inside the face right there and just didn't finish it down here at the bottom. Then we can put an eye and an eye and do a little nose and a mouth. That one looks a little strange this time. My last monkey came out a little cuter, but that's okay. Now let's try some where we leave gaps for the ears when we get to them. So how about we do a dog? Let's start drawing up like we're gonna do the head, leave a gap and down. These are gonna be where we're gonna attach the ears. I'm gonna make this one a floppy eared puppy. Okay, there's your basic flop pup. We can also go like this, leave the same little gap and do some up ears, kind of more like a, maybe a German Shepherd or something like that. And then if we go back, we can add the details. So for this one, I'm gonna give kind of the idea of the inside of the ear and the outside. And I'm gonna stick with simple faces, I think for today, just so we can focus on the ears. In general, if you do the little triangle nose with the little thing sticking down from it, and a crossbar to be the mouth, you can make that work for almost any animal. Maybe not the birds, I guess. Most mammals it'll work for though. We can do this little guy also the same way. I'm gonna make this one have kind of a, a muzzle that's pointed out. So let's draw kind of a, a bean shape and put the nose inside of it. There. And remember, if you're feeling like your drawing is not quite as cute as you'd hoped, try making the eyes a little bigger. That tends to increase the cuteness. Let's do a koala. This one we can do a blob. And then we want ears that come out and are wavy across the bottom. And then they have big noses. There's a little koala. What else can we do? Let's do, ooh, I have some that are not the standard blob shape, but I think they look really cute for cats. If you go up, do kind of a curve for the ear, across, curve, down. I'm gonna do a bunch just like this and show you some variation you can do. If you make it curve extra at the top, that gives you a different shape of cat. If you make it go straight up, but then have pointiness for the ears, you get a different variety. Let's see how we could decorate these. For this one, I'm going to go with my little face. Remember, whiskers are one of the things that people think of most when they think of a cat. So if you want to make sure it looks like a cat, go for your whiskers. I want this one to be fancy, so I'm going to give this one a bow tie. And then how about this one? Let's give them a little like stripes and a heart-shaped nose. And still whiskers. I put his eyes so far down, his whiskers are gonna have to be down here. Oh well, that's okay. And let's see, what should I do with this one? Let's make this one, maybe not even a cat. What could we turn this into? I'm gonna leave that there and think about it for a minute while I show you a frog. Check this out. Draw just like you were gonna make one of the dogs where you leave the gap, but then Act like you're gonna draw a circle, except only draw the part that sticks above. Okay, And then for the frog, we want the eyes to be way up here because they're kind of like sitting up on top of his head. And then you can put the mouth down there. 
Think about all the different variation you can make with just that same simple little blob. You could make a bear, you could make a sheep, you could make a unicorn, you could do basically anything with this same little blob. Think about, I'm leaving that one because I don't have more inspiration for a kitty right now. Let's try some I haven't practiced. Let's do some crazy stuff. How about we try a unicorn? All right, you ready? We're going to start with the horn. If you make these lines curved, it gives the impression of the spiral, kind of loop, loop, instead of straight across. And then let's draw the head to include the unicorn horn. Ooh, I could turn this into a narwhal too if I stopped right here. But for a unicorn, we're going to want like horse ears. Not my specialty, but I think that's probably about right. And then some hair because horses and unicorns both have that little forelock. I think that's what it's called, the bit that comes down in front. And then maybe you want to show some of the mane over here. And big old blob for the muzzle, but tiny nostrils, not huge like on a, on a uh, pig. And then some eyes. It's kind of a, sort of a unicorn. How about, a sh let's do a rhino. So let's do the blob. For me, a rhino, the thing that stands out is its horn. So big old horn, little eyes, little eyes, little mouth. And let's see, they have pretty small ears, I think. Maybe you like that? I clearly need to go look at some pictures of some rhinos. Here are some ideas. Go ahead and do some practicing. Remember to combine the different varieties of ears you can do with the different varieties of mouths and the different varieties of eyes so you can get lots and lots of different choices. I think what we're going to work on next when we come back to our little doodle creatures is the idea of building a bunch of them together into one big drawing. So get ready for that and have a good day. Remember, art doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes the point is just to have fun doing it.